Hello, this is Jonathan Linschek. It's July 13th, and this is a quick uh, demonstration of MongoDB connectivity for the New York Department of San Sanitation. I um, appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this. I know during the demonstration yesterday you wanted to see uh, the Mongo connectivity, which I didn't have installed. So just wanted to record a quick video, show you how easy it is within ClickSense, and then when we come back in a few days or a week or so, we can kind of dive into this a little more. Um, I'm going to go ahead and access the Mongo database that I've installed on my local laptop. So I just went out to MongoDB, downloaded a database version, installed it on my machine. Um, I went ahead and I created a database called New York uh, DS, NYDS, and created a collection within it using our recycling data. So this is the same a kind of recycling data that's out on the New York City open data site, as well as some of the demos we did yesterday with the recycling bins was using the same data. Uh, so you'll notice we have about 545 records showing all the different recycling bin locations within the city. Um, and we've actually supplemented it with uh, some data on um, how full each bin is, so 96% full, as well as how many days it's been since the last pickup, nine days. Um, so we can actually kind of dive in and, and connect to these documents within MongoDB. Uh, for uh, this demonstration, I'm actually going to be using the Click uh, Web Connectors. Um, you can certainly use MongoDB's connectivity, the, the BI connectors, in order to access MongoDB as well. Uh, but in this case, I'm using the connectors uh, within ClickSense. So you'll see there's a number of different connectors that can be utilized. Uh, everything from Facebook to Google Analytics. Uh, here's MongoDB. Uh, we have Slack, uh, Sugar. I apologize for that. Uh, YouTube, uh, Twitter, etc. Um, as well as some other ones. So on our standard connectors here, we have things like Box and Dropbox and Clout, uh, OneDrive. And there are a number of connectors that are currently in beta. So Adobe Analytics, uh, GitHub, uh, SurveyMonkey, etc. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go into the MongoDB connector. Um, and here I can actually uh, run a query to return the different co collections that I have, or I can look at the documents within each collection. Uh, so in this case, I'll go ahead and attach to a specific collection and define my connection string. So here I'm going to attach to my local host version of MongoDB running on port 27017. I'm hitting that New York DS database and that recycling collection. Uh, because I'm running it on my local machine, I actually don't have any authentication set up right now. Uh, so I'll go ahead and set this up. And what it will do is it'll show me a preview of the results. So now I can see a preview of all the different documents and the data that it's returning. And I can go to the ClickSense tab here and actually copy and paste the connection string that I'll then use within ClickSense to connect to that data. So you'll notice it's actually going to hit that a connector that's stored on my local machine. So I've installed this MongoDB connector on my local machine. It's hitting that connector at that port, um, and you can kind of see the string that gets created for that connectivity. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that to my clipboard, and now I can utilize it within a brand new application uh, within ClickSense. So when we did the short demonstration yesterday, we actually used the user interface for uh, adding different tables and connecting the information. Uh, there's another uh, way to connect to data, which is the data load editor, which gives you a lot more control and power of the data connections that you can make. In fact, you can use any number of hundreds of functions in order to manipulate the data and actually do some uh, kind of light ETL uh, to your information if you want uh, within the editor itself. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and into that editor, and I can actually cut and paste that connection string that we just created in here in order to create that Mongo connectivity. So I'll simply give this a name. I'll call this my Mongo database. I'll go ahead and paste that connection string in, um, and I could go ahead and work from it from here. Now, one of the nice things about using the editor is I can have a lot of control over what I do. For example, if I want this to be called uh, Recycle or, uh, or Recycle Bins or something like that, I can go ahead and name this whatever I'd like so that the end user would actually see that name. I could even you know, start to do some calculations and use some functions in order to do things such as make uh, coordinate points or do some advanced calculations in here if I want. So in this case, I'll go ahead and use that latitude and the longitude table to create a new column called coordinates uh, that I can then use when I'm doing my visualization. So now that I've kind of defined that connection, I can go ahead and uh, save that connection. 
and start to build out the application that I want using that MongoDB information. So now we're going to have kind of a blank application that I can use, and I can create a new sheet. I can call this my New York uh, DS data. And now we have a blank sheet, just like we saw during the demonstration yesterday. I can edit this and start to bring in the different data elements and visualizations that I'd like to see. So for example, if I want to bring in a simple bar chart, I can drag and drop this bar chart into my screen, and now I have access to that Mongo database uh, information. So I can say, show me the different boroughs uh, by their current usage, and we have a bar chart now showing me the aggregate values for each borough and um, what they are within each borough. So for example, Staten Island bur uh, recycling bins are 59.3% full right now. Manhattans are only 49% full. Um, I can bring in some more visualizations. So maybe I want a map showing where these recycling bins are. I can kind of come over to my data elements and say, you know what, let's uh, map the coordinates of each of those. Um, and I apologize, I misclicked. So I'll just delete that, come back in again. And we'll do it one more time. I can go ahead and drop the coordinates in there as a point level, and we'll display the address within each point. So now I have a whole number of points on the map showing me all the different locations of the uh, recycling bins. If I hover over any of those, I can see what the name of it is. So here is the 30 or 9329 Queens Boulevard bin. This is the Einrich Austin Playground bin, etc. I can further manipulate my map. Uh, for example, if I want to change maybe the size of the bubbles, so the size of the bubbles shows how full they are, I can drag that in and add that as a measure. So now the bigger the bubble is, the more full it is. And I can manipulate that bubble size so maybe they're not so large. So now if I kind of go into my map, I can see this bubble's kind of small, and it's because it's only 17% full, uh, whereas you know some of these other bubbles are a little bigger. This one's 59% full. This one's kind of tiny because it's only 2% full. So the size of the bubble uh, now matches up to how full that recycling bin is. I could also change the color. So days since the last service of that bin, I can set the color based on that as well. So now you can kind of see the darker the color is, uh, the more days it's been since that bin has been picked up. Uh, the final thing I maybe want to do here is we can actually just add some raw data in here as a table. Uh, so again, I can come into my data and I can say, okay, show me the uh, site name of each bin. Show me what type of bin it is. You know, and maybe, you know, show me the address of that bin, whatever it is. So now when the end user is in the application, they have a lot of power over what they can do. They could click on one of these bars and say, only show me bins in Brooklyn, only show me bar bins in Manhattan. Maybe I want to see bins in both uh, Staten Island and in the Bronx. I can do that as well. Uh, you can kind of zoom in here. If I wanted to, I can kind of draw circles around the different bins to select specific bins that I'm interested in. So a freehand circle there to highlight only a number of different bins. You can see there's a tiny bin here. Uh, that's 2% full, even though it was picked up seven days ago. You know, here's a bin that was picked up one day ago, but it's already 64% full. So some interesting information there. Uh, of course, if I click on any of those bins, I can now see the details of those bins. So this is the hub at 3rd Avenue. It's an outdoor bin at the corner of 3rd Avenue and 149th Street. So just a quick demonstration, but we wanted to highlight for you how we could kind of connect to that Mongo database data and actually build out kind of a quick and nice application. Uh, we'll follow up uh, in a few days and uh, look at next, next steps for helping you with your application. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.